guys, thank you so much for joining me on the Janine Hernandez TV show. Today, I have the privilege of having Mr. Sarem Baker with us. He is a journalist who has published thousands of articles. He is an author. He is the founder of Unique Access Entertainment Show on YouTube. He was an editor for The Source Magazine. Um, and did I mention author? He wrote The Gucci Mane Guide to Greatness, guys. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it, Janine. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much for joining us. I want you to tell our viewers a little bit more about you because I, like we were talking earlier, you have an extensive list of accolades. You've done so much in your career. I want them to know a little bit more about what you have done, how you got started, a little bit about your journey. Well, I was born and raised in Maryland, right in between Baltimore and Washington, which is one of the main reasons I Many reasons I love the Ravens, um, represent for Lamar. But um, yeah, so I was born and raised in Maryland. And then I went to college in, in Cincinnati, Ohio at Xavier University. And I grew up loving rap, my favorite thing in the world. And then when I got to college, I was trying to figure out, I had been trying to figure out, but I really then was like, man, how could I get involved in the music industry somehow? And then through talking to my dad and then asking around about the newspaper. I started writing for the student newspaper. And once I started doing that, I realized uh, Xavier actually paid for you to write in the newspaper, which I didn't know before I started. So when I got my first $5 check, I was like, wait a minute, I could actually get paid to write about rap? Let me, uh, let me get on this. And uh, that's how my career started. And I just kept uh, pushing hard and I've been pushing hard ever since. And I've had the good fortune of having a lot of friends and people that I've met along the way really helped me. I try to do the same for them. And then that's mm -hmm. led to me writing books, writing and producing for television. I've got some scripts that I wrote, one of which is getting some good traction now. So hopefully something will happen with that. And then just trying to build and, and keep going with Unique Access Entertainment, my YouTube channel. And then, like you said, I got books out. I got the history of gangster rap. And I got the Gucci Mane Guide to Greatness. I did with Gucci Mane. So I'm just trying to, you know, keep pushing. I love it. How many books do you have? Because I know that you have more than just two, right? Yeah, I got uh, 15. So I've got I, a few. I love it. Love it. Love it. That's such an inspiration. So guys, I actually um, read his book, The Gucci Mane Guide to Greatness. And as you guys know, I love, love to read. I read probably one book a week. And I have to say that this book right here was probably my top three for the year 2020, hands down. And I had to reach out to you. I'm like, who is this person? Who wrote this? This is like, it's just amazing. So I reached out to you and I'm just, I'm so grateful that you agreed to do an interview with with me because the book is amazing. If you guys haven't checked it out, make sure that you guys check it out. Um, so you talked a little bit about how you got started. What influenced you when you were younger to cover hip hop music, or what what made you decide to get in that in that industry? Well, ever since I was ten, and my friend Tom Erdely had given me a tape uh, with rap music, which I didn't know much about when I was ten. That just I just fell in love with it that day, and then. Uh, growing up right in between Baltimore and Washington, there's a lot of media coverage on a lot of things all the time. Because you have Baltimore, I grew up about 20 miles from Baltimore, 20 miles from Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. So we have the government, the national government, but that's also the local news for us because it's where we are. And a lot of my, some of my family and a few of my friends, they work for the government or for the state of Maryland. So I always knew there was a lot of stuff going on, but then also um, my dad in particular read a lot of the newspapers. And then I, when I was getting into rap, my parents bought me a subscription to the Source magazine. And then just coincidentally, the Washington Post in particular had a lot of coverage of rap. So I would see it in the newspaper, then I was starting to get magazines and I knew some of the other ones, the write-ons and word-ups. So. I was trying to figure out what I could do to kind of merge my love for um, journalism and news and information and music. And, you know, that's basically how I fell into it because I didn't, there were no record companies where I was growing up. There were no 
Uh, Go-Go music was big in DC, but that was basically indigenous to Washington, DC. It didn't really travel. So I was like, man, I love rap. How am I going to get involved with rap? And writing about it was how I ended up getting into the industry and getting to be part of it. And it's been a blessing for me so far. And I get to write books and you know, hang out and become friends with and get to really know the artists that I like and grew up admiring and get to interview people all the time for my Unique Access Entertainment YouTube channel. So it's it's phenomenal. I love it. That's such a blessing. And so I know like, so I remember back in the, I'm an 80s baby. So back in the 90s, um, it, you know, music, it was just different back then. We didn't have it at the access to we, that we have it now on the internet, on our phones, etc. We had to actually like go to a music store and grab music. We had to like, you know, record it on our cassette tapes, etc. Um, how difficult was it back then? Or was it, was it difficult at all to get barrier entry into this industry for you? Well, I had to basically figure it out as I went because mm -hmm. I had no family ties to the music industry. And like I was saying, in Maryland, there was no rap industry at all at the time. And then I didn't know anyone. I knew my friends liked Go Go like I did, but I didn't know anyone that was in the Go Go music industry. So I had no connection to anything. Mm -hmm. So I just had to figure it out. And it was very hard because if it was my school newspaper gave me the platform and the opportunity to write articles, which I then send to the record companies to try to get on their mailing list to get with their publicists. And then also to try in Cincinnati to get published in some of the Cincinnati publications, which I was thankfully able to do. And that really gave me a great foundation for the next stages of my career. But I had yeah. to figure all that out. I had to figure all that out. You know, I didn't, uh, you know, people would say, oh, you should try to write for them. But they didn't say, yeah, do A, B, and C. They are like, oh, you should write for that newspaper or that magazine. So I just looked in the inside of the magazine, saw their address and saw who the editors were. And I would just mail them stuff and then try to call them. That was it. Yeah, it's like snail mail back then. It's kind of like how we had to go to the books, had to go to the music stores and pick up the CDs or pick up the cassette tapes. It was different back then. Now we have the access, like how I, I did. I just kind of DM'd you and I'm like, hey, <laughs> hi, I would love to talk to you about your book. It's completely different. So I can just imagine like um, some of the obstacles that you had to get into the industry, but you made it happen. How did you get started with the Source magazine? Because that's pretty huge. That's how most people know you from is the source magazine and you were an editor right yeah so uh i got with the source when i was in college because uh, in cincinnati there's a there was a dj there he's moved but a dj named dj icd and i'd done a story on him for everybody's news which was the weekly free newspaper the alternative weekly kind of a village voice or la weekly equivalent for cincinnati at the time and when i did the article he really liked it and he's like hey man would you ever want to write for the source? And I was like, of course. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? He's like, well, I know a guy that works there and he's going to be here, whatever the day was, Thursday. You want to go with me to the record store and I'll introduce you to him. So I photocopied some of my articles I had done, put them in this manila folder, and I just went up to him and I was like, hey, man, our ICD introduced me. His name's Usman Sam. He did street team, uh, street promotions for the source at the time. And, uh, he literally took my envelope, opened it up right there, read it right in front of me and was like, yo, man, we need to have you write for the source. I'm going to call my my friend and editor, Dario Strange, and he's going to call you. And I was like, OK, that's amazing. I gave him my phone number. And then a day or two later, Dario called me and gave me some assignments and said, Usman had spoke real highly of me. And he had told him that I had these articles out. So, you know, I've always tried to be as prepared as possible for when opportunities arise. And thanks to DJ ICD and, and to Usman Sam at, uh, for getting me into the source. And that started me writing for them when I was in college. And then uh, several years later, I ended up getting a full-time job for them, thanks to Jeremy Miller and Kim Osario. 
That's awesome. And something that you just that you just said um, kind of resonated with me is being ready for an opportunity because you never know when they're going to come. And so it's just being ready, making sure that you have all your ducks in a row so that when the opportunities do present themselves, you are on top of it. You know exactly what you're doing, et cetera. That's awesome. Um, so now let's talk, let's switch gears a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about the book, uh, The Gucci Mane Guide to Greatness. How did this come about? How did you get, um, yes, how did you uh, get connected with uh, Gucci Mane and um, started working on this project? Well, I've been a fan of Gucci since he came out in around 2005-ish. At least that's when I started getting familiar with him. And I was supposed to do some work with them back in the day um, and it didn't end up working out because of some of his legal stuff. So basically I'd done the history of gangster rap and my manager, George Hinojosa, had connected me with a book agent, Robert, at, uh, Robert, and he was basically like, you know, would you be interested in doing a book with Gucci Man? I was like, of course. Mm -hmm. um, so I had done a book proposal that wasn't the same as Gucci Man Got the Greatness, but a uh, somewhat similar for a, another artist and he's like i really like that proposal you did could you do a similar one for gucci here's the basic idea of the book and so i wrote it up and they gave it to uh, robert gave it to gucci and his gucci's lawyer and then to simon and schuster who published the gucci man guide to greatness and they all really liked it and thought it was really good so then i got on the phone with simon and schuster and then i got on the phone with gucci and We've been rolling ever since, man. It's been amazing. So I'm very grateful that Robert and Stuart Roberts over at Simon & Schuster and then Gucci Man and Gucci's lawyer all were like very receptive to me and, and gave me this opportunity to write this book. And then it all comes back to my manager, George Hinojosa, uh, laying the foundation for all of this to be possible. So it's uh, I'm very fortunate. Yes. And so what, uh, tell our viewers what the book is about. Well, the Gucci Man Guide to Greatness is about Gucci's steps and the things that he's done, uh, especially within the last few years after his last time he was incarcerated. Things that he started doing while he was incarcerated, started paying attention, and then his life since then to be able to turn around and totally changed his life from his physical to his mental to how he, you know, now he's married and about to have another child. So it's the transformation in the way that he became, in his opinion, great. And he did that by the steps that he and I go over in this book and that, you know, we looked at his social media posts and, and a lot of them we took, we picked and choose, of course, but then we talked about them and then wrote about stories or why he wanted to say uh, the specific entry of the book. And that's how the book came to be. And it's all like Gucci's ideas and our discussing them. And then other things that came up, we might add something, but these are, you know, essentially built off of what Gucci lives, promotes, breathes and believes. Yes, and I don't want to give too much away, but one of the things that that I loved about the book is how he talks about having the self-awareness. He talks a lot about also about the physical, about having a healthy body, healthy mind. Um, I was blown away. I feel like you did such a great job in articulating what he believes in or what he stands for um, in the book. You did an amazing, amazing job articulating that. Um, so kudos to you for that. How was the writing process? Because I do have a lot of followers or viewers that are um, writers, authors, poets, etc. cetera. Um, they might be curious to know what the writing process was for you working with someone um, like Gucci Mane. Well, this writing the Gucci Mane Guide to Greatness is very different from most of the other books and in general, most of the other things I've written because it's all you know, his words, his thoughts and things. And I had, my main job was to uh, make it all into more of a quote unquote story and to make it flow, to take, you know, what we discussed, what he said, and just make those into stories that flow naturally. Because when we talk, when we think, you know, we don't always think A, B, C, D, E, F, G. We might go A, B, C, and then go to X, and then go back to D. So that's, you know, that was one of my main responsibilities. And then also mm -hmm. 
making sure to get great insight now from Gucci. But fortunately, with the Gucci Man Guide to Greatness, Gucci's very smart, he's very articulate, mm -hmm. and he has great insight. So that part of the job was easy. It was just me making sure if we did 10 entries, if one of them I needed to make sure like, hey, Gucci, when we talked about this, you got to like, what did you mean by that? And then I would get, you know, we would talk about that part of something. And that really added a lot of depth to the book. And then it also enabled us to, you know, have a really good working relationship because he's very focused and very driven and he wanted to make sure that his words were represented properly. And thankfully, I'm glad you enjoyed it. And the feedback we've gotten is phenomenal. But it's just my job uh, was really to just articulate and bring to life what he said and, you know, just make it flow. And that's yeah. that was something, that, you know, through our conversations that, you know, that was my main job. And then to put it in. You know, Stuart at Simon & Schuster really helped with this too, but I, you know, had come up with the initial structure of how I thought the, the book should be compartmentalized and the order and the flow of it. So Stuart helped with that too. And, you know, it's just, it was a great process. Yeah. And the, uh, so the book appeal is beautiful, by the way. It's gold, um, a gold color. And the inside, I love how it has um, the snow cones. And then there's like different photographs in the, in the book as well for like each chapter. So I love that. Um, give us a little bit more insight on that. Who was the illustrator? How did you guys come up with that concept? Well, the, they used several photographers, including Gucci's personal photographer, Matty Ice. And then uh, they use source photos from some other stuff. But we made a point to use photos that hadn't been seen or mm -hmm. if it was a photo that was from an event that it was a different, like if he was on the stage at this event, we showed him backstage in the book. So it was, mm -hmm. you might have seen him wear this outfit, but not this image of him wearing the outfit. So we tried to keep it so that anyone that looked at the photos also was learning and seeing a new side of Gucci because uh, that was very important. Uh, the art direction of it, I just gave notes and stuff. I didn't work with them other than, hey, you know, maybe this photo would be better here, but I didn't have much input. And the ice cream cone was one of those things that was uh, amazing because they didn't tell me they were going to do that. It wasn't until they sent me digitally the book to read it for any notes or what uh, copy editing or typos that we didn't catch before we laid it out. I didn't know that was happening. So when I saw it the first time, I was like, whenever people see this, it's going to blow them away because, yeah. of course, his tattoo and his music and all that stuff. And then to see it in the book, it just blew me away. So I, I thought that the whole team at Simon & Schuster did an amazing job laying out the book and the design of it and the photography that they selected, mm -hmm. I thought was incredible. And that was also great to, like, see what photos, if they sent uh, – hey, we like five of these, which one do you guys like? You know, Gucci decided which ones or picked the ones that he thought were the best. So that was uh, also amazing and just shows, you know, his his focus and his vision and being able to deliver that to his fans time and time again. Yes, I loved, loved all of it. I think that each photo as well goes very well with each um, section or chapter title. The Snow Cones was a great addition to it. I also personally love hardcover books. So the fact that it was a hardcover book fits in my purse. It's perfect. Um, it's definitely going to be a book that I gift for Christmas, for the holidays. Um, so it's, it's an amazing, amazing book. So I wanted to ask you, since you are a writer, you're an author, you write articles, et cetera, um, do you give yourself um, pressure when editing your book? Um, like, for example, me as an author, I tend to be a little bit of a perfectionist. So I double check and triple check. And I have this fear of like, oh, my God, people are going to read my work. I want it to be perfect. You know, do you encounter some of that or have you kind of pushed past those fears? I still live with those concerns and fears, but I've also been doing it a long time. So I know nobody's perfect. Everybody makes mistakes and I do all the time. But what I do do is try one thing to help me that I've developed over the years is trying to separate the time that I turn some in versus when I finish it. So I try to make sure even if it's just 10 minutes, 
to like put it down for a minute and then read it again. And now even one thing I've also noticed because everything is so digital, I do try to print things out because that makes me read it in a different way. Um, because, you know, now that everything is so fast and everything is so digital, it's just like, okay, I'm moving from my computer. Now I'm going to have to pull out the paper. I'm going to have to get a pen. I'm going to have to do all this, but it changes how you think in your routine a little bit. Um, and that's something I've been doing for a long time, but it's something that I've found really helps me because it gets me away from my computer and away from the keyboard to where I'm not thinking of like, oh, let me just fix this real quick. And then I didn't, since I wasn't paying attention, I didn't realize I picked, put an extra M over there. You know, it's uh, mm -hmm. something that I find is very helpful, but I always, you know, I'm not perfect. So I always make mistakes, but I also really try to proofread things and make sure everything is written as accurately as possible 100% of the time. So that's something that um, was recommended to me. This last book that I wrote was to actually print it out and redline it with a with a marker or something like that. Because when you look at it on your computer and you can read it over and over and over 10 times and your mind starts to trick you and you will look at the misspelled word and it'll look perfect to you. But once you actually print it out and you see it and you're like, okay, no, there's like, there's some errors here. Let's fix this, let's fix that. So it's kind of like going back to the old way of doing things. But it definitely does make a difference. Um, so do you have any other books that you're currently writing up, working on? I do. Uh, I'm in the process of the one of them I'm in the uh, contracts phase of. So it's not finalized yet. So I have to hold off. But yes, I have other things that are in the pipeline that if all goes well, we'll complete either this month or next month on the contract side of things, knock mm -hmm. on wood. And hopefully I'll have another book out, you know, by the end of the next year, knock on wood. That's awesome. Love it, love it, love it. So um, I wanted to ask you, <laughs> did you watch the uh, verses for, with uh, Gucci Mane and Yeezy? <laughs> Absolutely, I did. Your, th your thoughts on it. I actually, I watched, I waited. I know that they started late. They wa I waited for about an hour and then I watched like 45 minutes of it. And then I had to leave for dinner. But uh, your thoughts on it? What are your thoughts on it? I thought, of course, I may be biased by some people, but I thought Gucci won. And a lot of people I noticed were commenting, which I also agree with. The funny thing is Gucci didn't even play a lot of his big, big songs because he was uh, playing the songs that were addressing Jeezy or he was just playing more street stuff or more current stuff. He didn't even dip into a lot of like his big big songs of which he has dozens mm -hmm. so that was very interesting to me but it also showed like gucci was super serious about the verses and about making sure that people knew that you know he's a serious dude so yeah. he's not to be, he's not to be played with but it's a battle so <laughs> Um, yeah, so I, that's awesome. I wanted to get your take on that and uh, let's switch gears just a little bit. Cause I wanted to ask you about your uh, YouTube unique access entertainment. Tell our listeners a little bit about that. Who have you interviewed and what's coming up in the pipeline with that? Well, for unique access entertainment, uh, ever since maybe college or a little bit after everybody was always like, Soren, you should have your own magazine. Soren, you need your own magazine. So in 2016, I finally did it and launched Unique Access Entertainment. So I've done more than 550 interviews for the channel or 550 videos. And I try to put up one a day where I'm interviewing artists. And some of the bigger people I've had, I've had uh, Ice-T, I've had MC Ren, I've had David Banner, I've had Goody Mob, Talib Kweli, Jay Prince, Special Ed, Dana Dane. Kwame, um, you know, so I've had G Perico, I've had AD, I've had so many artists, AMG, on and on and on and on. So I've been fortunate to be able to interview a lot of people in MC8 and JJ Fad from different area, eras, different regions, different backgrounds. And I just love it because you know, when I get to interview someone like Sadat X, who I recently did from Brand Nubian, 
you know, I try to ask them stuff that they haven't been asked before or just a little bit different. And, you know, when I, they seem to appreciate it. And Sweet Tea, I just interviewed her and put that video up recently as well. And she seemed very su pleasantly surprised at some of the things I knew or asked her about. So that, that's what I'm doing for because I love the music and I love interviewing the artists and working with them, whether that's to interview them or write a book with them or to get them on unique access. I just love interacting with the artists and asking them about what inspires them and makes them, uh, you know, makes them who they are. And that's something that when I launched Unique Access in 2016, like the first week I had stuff with actor, comedian Slink Johnson, I had Exhibit, I had Tech Nine, I had Chris Calico. So I had all these huge guys just because I asked them if I could interview them and they all agreed to it. And, you know, that's something that I'm grateful for every day that I get to really live my dream and know and work with and be friends with a lot of the guys that either I grew up idolizing or as my career progressed that I came out with or got to be friends with, you know, around the same time, like Exhibit and Tech Nine. And it's just, it's very fulfilling to me because it's, you know, what I love. It's what you love to do. And there's there's um, something about doing what you love doing every single day. You just wake up with a different, like, spunk to you. It's just different. That's awesome. Well, congratulations to you and your uh, Unique Access Entertainment and everything that you're doing. I did want to ask you, though, um, do you foresee yourself writing any books for women? Actually, one of the ones that I'm talking about is would be with a woman wow. and um i have a lot of interest one of the women i did want to write one with i found out had some in the works so i was a little disappointed but um absolutely i'm uh as i've done on unique access i've interviewed for my whole career women and i think mm -hmm. you know i'm a i would be considered like a feminist or w whatever i believe women oh, should yeah. get equal equal of everything that men do. So I'm a staunch supporter of women. I have a daughter, I have a woman that I love. So I have, I'm all for the equality and promoting and presenting women in the best light. So yes, if, if and when the one comes through, that would be great. And if not, I hope to have another opportunity soon. Definitely got to keep me in the loop because I will be the first one to buy that book. <laughs> um, right. And then I had seen on your social media that your daughter wrote a book. She did. She has, uh, it's called My First Book. She published it when she was eight. And we're finishing up her next book, which if all goes well, is going to come out this month. And that one's going to be called The Girl with Gills. So it's another fiction story. And this one is around 6,000 words. So she's 10 years old and she's written a 6,000 plus word book, wow. which to me is uh, phenomenal. She's very, she loves reading. She loves writing. And I try to encourage her and support her as much as I can because I know that's important. And of course, I love her and want the best for her. So I try to help her in whatever way. And, and it's great because she's very driven as well. Like she wants to be uh, an author and she is one and she wants to be successful and she is. And she wants to, she's also a great drawer. So she illustrated her first book. And she illustrated her book that's going to be coming out soon. So Wow, that's awesome. So I had seen the post and I was, I resonated it, I resonated with it because um, I, when I was nine years old was when I started writing back in the 90s. Um, and like I said, we didn't have the access that we do now with internet or with self-publishing, et cetera. You had to go through traditional publishing. That was your only route. And back in the 90s, like, you know, my parents did the best that they could, but we were just weren't able to find me a publishing contract. So I ended up writing when I was about nine or 10 and I didn't publish until about five years ago. So it took me about 17 or 18 years of holding this dream in my hands of like wanting to become an author. And I just couldn't do it at the time. So that's, that's awesome that she has you as a role model and that she is writing 6,000 words at the age of 10 and illustrating her own books. That is amazing. And I can just, I can't wait to see her progress, see where she's going to be in 10, 15 years. She's going to be like you, I have 15, 15 books. <laughs> um, so that's super, super dope. I love that. Yeah, well, so I want to 
I wanted to ask you um, if we have, if I have any authors or viewers right now that maybe have thought about writing a book but are scared or afraid to put their story out there, what would you tell them? Well, this ties nicely into the Gucci Man Guide to Greatness, which mm. is do it now. One mm. thing that I know, one thing that we all do is procrastinate or doubt ourselves or what have you, but uh, talking to Gucci, and this is something that I try to do a lot as well, which is why it was so perfect to put in the Gucci Man Guide to Greatness, is do things now. So when you have the idea, you have the motivation, you have the desire, just do it. And that's something, that's why the Nike slogan, just do it, resonated with me, even as a kid, and why acting on your desires and your dreams is so valuable, because, you know, for myself, I see that when I take notes or I say, oh, I want to do this or do that, um, you know, of course, I'm not always successful, but you have to put yourself in a position to be successful. Mm -hmm. And you do that by starting the process. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, like I said, with the Gucci Man Guide to Greatness, I did a proposal that wasn't the Gucci Man Guide to Greatness that got me this job yeah. and that, or that helped me land this job. And that's because. I was like, man, I'm going to do my best all the time. And when I did that other proposal, and maybe I'll still get to do that one, but that led the way to the Gucci Man Guide to Greatness, which was huge for me because I love Gucci's music and I really support his uh, metamorphosis and becoming this new person that he is. But I wouldn't have had that if I hadn't started with something else that I did on speculation just because I thought it was a good idea and, 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 but I did it. If I had just kept it in my brain, um, the Gucci Man Guide to Greatness, at least my involvement in it might not exist. So you gotta, you gotta move when you're, when, when you're moved, you need to move. <laughs> yeah, because if you don't move, that feeling in the pit of your stomach will continue to bother you. I promise you, it'll continue to tell you, write that book, write that book, write that book. Um, and I always tell people, make a decision. Like all you have to do is tell yourself, do you want to write this book? Is it a yes or a no? If it's a yes, then do it. That's literally all you have to do. Just go out and do it. Um, so thank you for that. Um, so I do, uh, if you're if you're watching this today, I wanted to let you guys know that um, we have kind of teamed up and we're going to be doing a giveaway for this book. Um, I've already read it. It's amazing. You guys are going to love it, but it's signed by Soren and uh, one of you guys can actually win the book. So stay tuned on Instagram and Facebook because I'll have the details on that. Is there anything that you would like to leave our listeners with? Any last minute words? Well, I would just say if you're a writer or an aspiring writer or an author or an aspiring author to just, you know, just do things, believe in yourself and keep pushing because everything now with COVID and with our economy and with different things that are going on in the world, like there are a lot of negative things going on, but it's also a time of opportunity because more people are at home and more people are doing Zoom or more people are reading because they're at home and they're not going out and traveling. So yep. this is as bad as it is on one hand, it's also an opportunity to get things done. And you can do that all at your house, whether that's with a notepad, with a keyboard, with a computer, or with what a, your phone, however you write, you can do it. And just, you know, you gotta, as they always say, you gotta believe in yourself before anybody else will. So I would mm -hmm. just, really say to do those things and then i'm grateful janine for you having me on here and just for people supporting the gucci man guide to greatness supporting the history of gangster rap you can look at all my books are on amazon some of them are at barnes and noble and all the other bookstores but you guys could uh check them out support them hit me up on social media it's just my name at soren baker and then unique access to entertainment is just unique access ent and subscribe to that on YouTube, please. It's free, of course. And, you know, I'm just trying to keep living my dream and, and keep having new big dreams and bigger dreams to, to live. So 
Well, you're definitely, definitely an inspiration. Like I said, once I read the book, I, I watched what you were doing on YouTube, on Instagram. I was like, he is an inspiration. I need to talk to him. So thank you so much. I really, really, truly appreciate it. And if you're ever in Arizona or if you ever want to collaborate on anything, I am so, so excited to have gotten to know you. Um, and if there's anything that I can do to support you and help you, definitely, definitely let me know. But thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode of the Janine Hernandez TV show. We'll see you later. Thanks, Janine. Appreciate it.